Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Jessica Devereaux in Baltimore. And welcome to this edition of The Ratner Report. Now joining us is Michael Ratner. Michael Ratner is the President Emeritus of the Center for Constitutional Rights, and he's also a board member of The Real News Network and, of course, a regular here at The Real News. Thanks for joining us, Michael. It's good to be with you, Jessica, and The Real News. So, Michael, so many revelations coming out this week, um, WikiLeaks revel revelations. Can we just talk about some of the, the, the most significant ones? I mean, this week and last week, I actually wanted to address two topics. One is the revelation, uh, revelations, and secondly, a report that CCR, my office, submitted to the UN on protection of not just whistleblowers, but publishers as well, and why journalists are entitled uh, to the same protections as whistleblowers. But first, to the revelations. Uh, as you look at the website of WikiLeaks, uh, WikiLeaks.org, you have to remember this. Julian Assange has been in the embassy for three years, uh, in Ecuador, the Ecuadorian embassy in London. He's been in custody uh, for five years. And the U.S., United States, has an unprecedented investigation of WikiLeaks, Julian Assange, and the staff of WikiLeaks. And I just imagine to myself the courage it takes uh, for Julian and WikiLeaks to keep going, uh, despite the dire circumstances of Julian's physical uh, where he is physically and can't leave the embassy. Uh, and yet the important work of WikiLeaks is continuing. So let's have a look at even the last few days of revelations, uh, but even the last few weeks, uh, July 9th, a couple of days ago, uh, more than a million emails uh, from an Italian surveillance malware vendor called the Hacking Team uh, were revealed that show the inner workings of the global surveillance industry. That's July 9th. July 8th, the day before, a uh, title of this release is called All the Chancellor's Men. The Chancellor is Chancellor Merkel. It's July 8th. NSA surveilled 125 phone numbers of top German officials. They did it not to stop terrorism. That's obvious, uh, as no, almost none of this surveillance is, if any of it. They did it for political and economic reasons according to their own designations of coded uh, information on these surveillance logs. For example, they wanted the reaction to the financial crisis in Germany, et cetera. That's July 8th. July 4th, our Independence Day. The title of the WikiLeaks release is called Bugging Brazil. We all knew something about them bugging Brazil from the earlier Snowden revelations. Now we get a top secret national security agency list of 29 Brazilian government phone numbers that were selected for surveillance, much more extensive than we knew before. That's July 4th. July 1st, TIA, T, TISA release, Trade and Services Agreement. Perhaps a lot of our viewers don't know what that is, but WikiLeaks releases a modern, what they called a modern journalistic holy grail, the secret core text for the largest trade deal in history the Trade and Services Agreement. What it really ultimately does, at least what WikiLeaks showed it did in this revelation, is it reduces regulations in countries so they cannot favor local services. So if you want to hire locally, like we have these slogans, you know, buy locally, et cetera, you can't. You have to essentially allow international corporations to penetrate your borders and come in and undercut your own people. Uh, and remember, TISA is one of what WikiLeaks refers to as a triumvirate of trade agreements that are really neoliberalizing the whole world. One is, of course, something they revealed earlier on the Trans-Pacific Partnership, and they also revealed material on the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Pact. Uh, these are all shaped in favor of transnational corporations, and many countries are, are involved in it, but of course, not China. So that all... Uh, the uh, TISA just took place uh, a few days ago, July, uh, July 1st. A week before that, July 23rd, called Espionage Elise. That's where the NSA is targeting high-level officials uh, in France. Uh, we already knew from WikiLeaks that they targeted the last three presidents. And finally, I'll end on this one, although we could go on. Uh, one of my favorites, June 19th, uh, the Saudi cables. WikiLeaks has apparently a half a million or more cable traffic uh, from Saudi foreign ministry to other 
places, its own ministries around the country, its own consulates, half a million cables in the Saudi foreign ministry, as I said. What Julian Assange said about this, uh, the Saudi cables lift the lead on an increasingly erratic and secretive dictatorship that has not only celebrated its 100th beheading this year, but which has also become a menace to neighbors and itself. So it's been an extraordinary uh, period of revelations for WikiLeaks, despite Julian Assange's um, confinement in an embassy. Michael, you also mentioned that the Center for Constitutional Rights, which represents WikiLeaks and its editor-in-chief, Julian Assange, just submitted a report to help the United Nations complete their review on whistleblowers and protection of sources. This is something, certainly, I myself am very concerned with as a journalist, but also as a citizen. Can you just give us a breakdown of what was in that report? Well, what we're trying to do, and I should say that a lawyer who works with me and WikiLeaks, Kerry Shankman, was the principal author of that report. It's online at the Center for Constitutional Rights website. And what we've always noticed is that whistleblowers are always out there. We have to protect whistleblowers. They don't do a very good job of it, obviously, in the United States. Obama has went after them constantly. Uh, but you also have to protect journalists like yourself, uh, Real News, other people, uh, because without journalists to publish the information, uh, that that whistleblowers obtain will never see the uh, information will never see uh, the light of day, uh, and so you see that, and we see that particularly uh, with my client WikiLeaks and Julian Assange, is they've gone after WikiLeaks, which is a publisher, incredibly. I mean, they've really hit the hammer on them. You know, huge investigation going on. Uh, he's had he's confined in the embassy, no recognition of his, of his, of his asylum that Ecuador has given him uh, because of this. And of course, WikiLeaks has, despite this, uh, gone on as a publisher and, as we've said, revealed uh, much information. But you can understand how you as a journalist or others would say, well, if to the extent the Obama administration and others are saying publishers are somehow associated uh, with their sources and in the same bucket, um, publishers, according to people like the people in this administration in the United States, can be subjected uh, to prosecution and certainly harassment, et cetera. Uh, so one of the important things we've stressed in this UN report, and the UN report goes to the special rapporteur uh, for freedom of expression, uh, David Kay, and he hopefully will adopt some of our recommendations, submit that to the United Nations General Assembly, and we may begin to get some protections uh, for publishers as well. Uh, so we submitted this report. Uh, and we all understand the necessity of having publishers protected, uh, but there's also a, a good legal argument why publishers have to be, be protected. Here in the United States, there is protection for whistleblowers, I should say, for whistleblowers, particularly if they come from other countries, not our own whistleblowers. Whistleblowers from China or places the United States doesn't like, those people who flee those countries, come into the United States, ask for asylum, they get protection uh, as a vulnerable group. Uh, considered vulnerable because they're attacked because of their free speech activities. Uh, they get asylum and they're protected. Of course, U.S. people don't, uh, but that you would expect, unfortunately, from this country. So what we're trying to argue in this report is that, is that publishers, like whistleblowers, are a vulnerable group. They're attacked because of their free speech, because of their uh, freedom of expression, uh, and they deserve uh, to be protected as well as whistleblowers. And our hopes are at the center, our hopes are at WikiLeaks for Julian Assange, that in a world of more and more secrecy, uh, and in a world in which, because of that secrecy, we're getting less and less democracy, uh, that, the U that the United Nations will recognize that publishers like WikiLeaks and Julian Assange will be given the UN protection uh, that they're entitled to. Uh, I have to say in closing, we're at a remarkable and amazing moment. We're seeing really the unraveling of governments and corporations and their secrets all over the world. They're not winning. And just remember this as I close, democracy dies behind closed doors. And all of us are in this together to protect whistleblowers and publishers so that we can have true democracy someday in this country and in the world. All right, Michael Ratner, very powerful message there. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Jessica, and The Real News. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.